Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Here's your host, Carrie Lazat. Hi and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. This is where you get to meet the people that help keep things running here in Bloomfield Township. And if you're watching live, I encourage you to say hello to us, ask a question, or just let us know you're there and how you're doing. You can watch it live. Uh, we're broadcasting on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, a couple of pages there. And then what we'll do is we'll take the show and we'll put it onto our cable broadcast later. So you may be watching it on cable, but we usually broadcast every other week at 10 a.m. That's our goal. Um, I'd like you to, all, I'd like also Coffee with Carrie, I'd like to invite you to come visit me at the studio where I will make you a cup of coffee. And at this time, I'd like to thank our sponsor, White Pine Coffee, who is a spectacular um, local roaster in Oxford. And I'm, today I'm drinking the Shanty Boys land. So thanks so much to them. Um, and they are located next to the Pollyann Trail in Oxford. So you can take a little walk and then uh, um, stop for a refreshment and no better coffee anywhere. So thank you very much. And without further ado, I would like to introduce my guest today, Christine Tavaro, which Brian's with tomorrow, who is our director of senior services here in Bloomfield Township. Welcome, Christine. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Well, I'm so happy to have you. So Christine and I have been working together. I've been here since the end of June and we've been making a few videos for Christine and helping out with all the special events. And it's been a really, uh, it's been a real pleasure. So I've, I've very, very much enjoyed getting to know the seniors in our community and everything they offer at the senior center. So great job. Thank you. Um, so can you give us a little bit of background on, um, you know, where the senior center services started in Bloomfield Township and kind of um, your background, how long you've been involved and how the programs have grown. Sure. Yes. So interestingly enough, the senior services started in the very early 70s at a local church, actually St. Hugo of the Hills. And then very quickly in the mid 70s was adopted by the uh, Bloomfield Hills School District. At that time, they were able to have a recreation millage and they were growing their recreation programs and it made perfect sense for that. So when I came on board in 95, um, they were I was part of Bloomfield Hill School District. So for 10 years, I was an employee and uh, we were um, located down and some people might know it as Booth Elementary School or the Doyle Center now. Um, so we were there uh, for quite a long time. And then uh, wonderfully, uh, there was some nice uh, communication between the school district and the township. And um, there was an effort to move Bloomfield um, Senior Services to the township. And the first step was a millage of the very first ever senior service millage in 2004, and it was passed. Um, so that was great. And then very quickly in 2005, we joined the township as an official department. Excellent. So and um, so the building is now. Oh, We're yes. The building for us. Sure, sure. So, yeah. So adding on to that, then there was a capital um, bond program put together in 06 and this a new senior center was included in that and then uh, fortunately that passed and we were able to open this new beautiful state-of-the-art senior center in 2009. Mm -hmm. 25,000 square feet so it's big. It yeah. is big. Yeah. We're yeah. fortunate we have a warm water pool, mm -hmm. we have an indoor walking track, um, we have 40 pieces of fitness equipment, um, There, uh, we have a the up the main level we call it main level is all multi-purpose spaces so that can be special events can be clubs and drop-in programs and presentations um, and all kinds of other enrichment type of activities okay great well we have some photos so we're going to take a look and i think the first one we have is um, a little bit of the programming that goes on outside of the senior center so can you tell us what's what's happening here sure absolutely so this is a great photo from art prize last year um, we have um, often uh, had, prior to the pandemic, um, we had about 80 day trips a year. We have our own vehicles, our own drivers, and we would set up programs and we would go to the DIA and the DSO and Meadowbrook and Purple Rose Theater and um, a number of other things like the weather station or a tour of the federal building in Detroit. So just as unique um, uh, of venues as we could find, uh, often uh, included in that would be a restaurant stop, which was quite nice. Um, so that was a very strong program. Of course, it had to get rolled back, um, paused during the pandemic. But I'm happy to say that uh, this fall we're, we're growing that program even more. And this is an example of last year when we tried just a few programs. But people, nice. we're finding people are 
are ready. They're hungry to get out and make connections. Right. So um, this is the, one of the main areas up on the main floor, right, where programming can be held. Yes. So What's going on here. Yeah. So this was our um, ice cream social back in June. Um, and that was, I think, 80 to 100 people came. Um, and we were highlighting also all of the programs and services just to give people a reminder. Of course, lots of new people came to that, which was really wonderful. Um, How and many we, people are you usually servicing right now? So right now, um, we're about 100 to 150 people a day coming to the center. Mm -hmm. But of course, there's a whole range of people who are doing online programs and services. And then all of our supportive services are out in the community as well. Um, an example might be we're transporting someone from their home to their medical appointment, mm -hmm. or um, we are delivering meals on wheels to them or making a call to do a wellness check, mm -hmm. um, those kinds of things. So there are a number of programs outside of the building, but daily in person is about 150. Okay, let's take a look. What's So what's happening here? It looks very festive. Yes, last year um, we had our, uh, it was a DSO program, Home mm -hmm. for the Holidays. That was a trip again. And then you can see in front there is one of our fundraising activities, um, which is okay. the a tree of life and people make donations and get to honor someone. And we have that in the in the lobby uh, throughout the holiday season. Nice. OK. And so this is one of our fitness instructors as well, right? Yeah, this is okay. Ernie Thomas. And Ernie was demoing um, some of our cardio equipment mm -hmm. and that's in the lower level. And there he is on our strength training equipment. So we our strength training equipment is actually pneumatic. So there's no heavy weight plates or clanking mm -hmm. or pins. Mm -hmm. um, so it's easier on the joints too. That's the reason we purchased that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So let's go back to, let's see who's next. Oh, this is recent. No? Yeah. So yeah. we have every year a, a compassion walk. We have a barbecue associated with that and a garage sale. Um, so this is a, an example of some of the wonderful food and of course, great people enjoying it together. Right. Did I tell you my husband really liked that Italian sausage? Did I tell oh. you? He was so impressed with um, was who was it that provided the food that day? Yes, our wonderful partners, American House Stone. Yeah. They yeah. know how to do food. He was so impressed. He was like, "You got to find out for me where we got that sausage from." <laughs> so, anyway, here we are back in the uh, fitness center, and this is another treadmill. And oh, yeah. who's this? Oh, so that I call her Officer Maggie. This is the uh, police department's therapy dog. And she was helping us promote for the compassion walk. And that was probably in August. Nice. Okay. And then here's another fitness program we have going on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this is oh, um, same class. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a, a seated class, which is great. Uh, but there's still a lot you can do, of course, um, in a seated position. And then what I don't have is a demonstration, I don't think, of any of the um, classes where there are no uh, seats involved, but we do have Pilates, Tai Chi, um, multiple cardio programs, um, a bar uh, a bar balance class. So there's small group personal training, one-on-one -on -one personal training, and then we, of course, have what we call open hours fitness, which is people coming and they learn how to use the equipment uh, safely and effectively, and they can drop in anytime the center is open. Great. And what are the regular hours right now? Right now, we're 7.15 to, to 3, um, Monday through Thursday, and 7.15 to 1 on Fridays. Okay. And um, this is, uh, what's happening here? Oh, again, this is a, another event where we were showcasing programs. So um, we can see Maggie's talking to someone about a fitness program. He was new to the center, and he actually uh, partic He joined and um, uh, is now taking some fitness classes. And um, you can see in the background, there's some gals shopping mm -hmm. for cards. We have a great program called Paper right. Dolls, and yeah. they repurpose cards and sell them to help us raise money for Meals on Wheels. Nice. Oh, and so Meals on Wheels is another program that's offered. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit more about what, what that is and who I can would. sign up for it? Yeah, I would, because of course, during the pandemic, when people mm -hmm. weren't going anywhere, we saw like almost a 40% increase in our Meals on Wheels. Um, and we had to go to frozen delivery because we weren't able to have as many people going into the homes. Um, so the neat part about that is now we have retained that option. So now our meals program includes, you can receive a hot meal delivered to your door Monday through Friday, or only two or three days if you wish. You can get one, one day per week delivery of frozen meals that you then heat on your own. And then we have a new program that's called um, On The Go, and people can order in advance and pick up a meal here at the center or multiple meals at the center and then um, take them home. So the program I really want people to understand is this is not an income-based program. This is for any older adult, 60 and above, who is having difficulty 
um, either shopping, preparing, et cetera, their meals, or just really want to boost their nutritional um, uh, content for their uh, meals. So we have a, a multiple ways that we would like to be able to help people. And so tell me, so if it's not income-based, I guess, how, how does the program get paid for? Oh, good question. Uh, we do a lot of fundraising, and then we do have some federal gr um, grant funds through the Community Development Block Grant that assists us, but it is a private pay model. Mm -hmm. And so is that, um, it's just for residents of Bloomfield Township? It is for residents, okay. um, but we have a contract with the City of Bloomfield Hills, and okay. we will serve uh, their customers as well because they provide us grant funding for those meals specifically and the administration of them. Great. And so you think, is there an opportunity to grow that? to serve some of the other local communities or is it your kind of at capacity right now? Um, we are at capacity now, but there are some excellent organizations that um, wrap around us. Mm -hmm. Pontiac Meals on Wheels, there's Western Oakland Meals on Wheels, which actually covers almost all of Oakland County now. Okay, let's go back to uh, some of our photos. I think this is part of your, your staff here. You're in the center. In the yes. center. Yeah. yes, that was this summer. We were all excited for the um, for the compassion walk and and actually it's it's interesting because that photo shows that of that uh photo there are only three of us that were here before the pandemic so mm. since the pandemic we've had a lot of new um ideas new fresh people coming in mm -hmm. uh, which is really great we had a lot of retirements um and you can see the nice uh, variety of age and that sort of thing so it's been an exciting year for us yeah and here we are in the heated pool. Yes. yes, yes. So this is an aquatic program. Um, the 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 pool programs are very popular. Um, we have, I think it is twenty nine. No, excuse me, nineteen different um, pool opportunities where people can come in. And, and there's a variety of levels. So if people are very very active, they we have programs for them. People are new to water exercise. We have something for that. We have some lap swimming opportunities. Um, but it is a warm water pool. It's only four feet deep. Um, so if even if someone doesn't know how to swim, they are welcome. And I think that they would be comfortable. We always have a lifeguard on duty. We, of course, have the instructor. And it is a beautiful setting. You can look in the back and see mm -hmm. the beautiful natural uh, views that we have out that window. We see deer. We see turkey. So that's a really pretty space in our building. Nice. Okay. And there, oh, here's our little, she, when she was a puppy, right? This yeah, is little Maggie was trying out the track. Making a and I think uh, I think that's our last photo. So yeah, so the track is interesting too because we do have a lot of people who come in, especially in the bad weather, and they feel that it's safe and there's no potholes and no gravel to stumble upon. So they're really happy with the walking track, um, and it is quite well used. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about you know the challenges now. You know, pre-COVID, I think you were saying you know in one of your presentations that the um, attendance was just kept growing and growing. And then because of COVID, everybody stayed home for a long time. So where are we now? And what are um, what are we doing to get back to kind of the way things were pre-COVID? Yes, thanks. Um, so prior to the pandemic, we were about 300 to 350 visits a day. It was over 70,000 visits mm -hmm. in a year. Um, so yes, it, it has been a struggle. We unfortunately um, were closed for 15 months. And um, we had to cut our staff back to less than like about 30%. But we did, um, I really want people to understand that even though the center was close to the public, the staff maintained a number of programs. So we did virtual fitness at about 25% the rate that we um, had when we were open to the public. We also did partnered with BCTV to create some wonderful shows that are still on the website now. And those are complimentary. People can watch them. Um, at the time they choose or during the regular lineup. Or on demand. On demand. On or, demand as well. Uh, that's right. Um, and so uh, that was important. The Meals on Wheels grew. We, we um, continued minor home repair, uh, friendly caller, and medical transportation. So there was a lot that we still did during the pandemic. But now, moving forward, we've been open about a year, a little over a year. And um, it was a gradual growth uh, in terms of people feeling comfortable to come to come back in public and be in group settings. Um, so that has been, again, gradual, but we are seeing a really fun uh, peak right now. So in August, we released our fall catalog and we set a record for registration. So that first week it goes live is always the biggest week mm -hmm. of registration. And um, the first week of August, we actually um, were higher than our highest registration number in 2019. So fall of 2019. So, so that bodes well. Um, we're back to, I think, 48 fitness programs weekly. 
Uh, in September, we had 45 enrichment opportunities, either trips or drop-in programs or clubs or presentations. And then this coming October now, we have uh, 48 um, in lined up. So we're ready for people and they are showing up. Oh, terrific. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about some of the community partners that you that support the work that you do and who um, who comes out to help out? With things? Sure. So we we I think we ended up partnering with about 20 different during the pandemic. And we have maintained some of those relationships. Kind of a unique one is um, with the University of Michigan Medical mm -hmm. um, School uh, Medicine. They just call it University of Michigan Medicine. And they have a program called the OS OSHER Lifelong Learning Institute and Ollie, we call them Ollie, mm -hmm. um, and they provide us with really great uh, uh, virtual content. Mm -hmm. So we we provided those out to people in their homes, but now we're able to host those presentations here. So that's a really great program. And now we're starting to um, this fall. We're now. Um, showing our in-person or starting our in-person presentations. So it might be Oakland County Historical Society. Um, of course, our wonderful public safety people are coming. Our Bloomfield Township uh, public librarians are coming back. Um, so those are some very cool things. DIA presents here. So the, the public safety, they come in once a month. Yes. To talk about a variety of subjects. And then for the U of M thing, so is yeah. that um, people, you, you get together in a group and you watch it from the senior center? Yes. That's what you're doing? Okay. So you yeah. can come in, have your cup of coffee or something, and then um, see some friends, get your work out, get some uh, mental stimulation. So exactly. all of those things can happen. So, yes. great. so I know we've, we've had, I've been watching our little viewers. So we've been like two to seven there. People are uh, popping in and out as they watch oh. the broadcast. So that's kind of fun. So if any of you right now who are watching would like to say hello or ask a question of Christine, just type it in to the comment section on Facebook or YouTube, and then you can ask that question live and we'll put it up on screen. So go ahead and do it. Don't be shy. So, um, and I think, you know, I think we should go out and visit White Pine Coffee. I'd love to make a trip out there and I will get on the bus too, because I will always go out and visit White Pine Coffee. So is, the, is that the kind of trip that you guys plan? Oh, absolutely. Like I say, we'll go to the theater, but we also want to go to unique places. Like I love the idea of that we we visit new restaurants that have just opened. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a really good good thing. We went to Eastern Market a few weeks ago. Um, we also went out to Blake Cider Mill. Um, so we like to do those kind of low key casual things that you know. So how maybe... do people get around? Like, uh, so there's one one bus, two buses. How does that happen? We have a 24 passenger bus mm -hmm. and our own driver, but we also have smaller vehicles, 14 passenger and 10 passengers. Okay. So it just depends on the registration and that sort of thing. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so I know people always want to know about where does the money come from to fund the senior center? And I, there's, uh, it'd be great if all the programming could be free. Why can't it be free for the taxes that we pay? So can you, you want to ex explain the financial picture of the senior center to us a little bit? Sure. Yes. So we're a bit unique in that um, we're the only department that is funded with tax dollars at about 48 to 50 percent of our budget. Mm -hmm. So the rest of our budget has to come from program revenue. So people who are benefiting from a program or service are contributing donations, fundraising, um, grants um, and that sort of thing. So the hard part for us is that because we're local government and don't carry a 501c3, we don't we're not able to apply for most of the grants that are out there. Occasionally we get some. Um, we do have some smart funding and some block grant funding that assist us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of how we are uh, financially. Um, so we really, attendance is really, really important to us. And um, I do want to say that um, I forgot to mention it earlier, is that we track the number of new customers that come in and create a profile and join to start with some sort of program. And so all year, this year, 2022, we've been averaging about 20 a month. And then in um, August, we were 44. So I'm excited. I'm waiting. Oh, wow. for this. Okay. Yes. So we've yeah. doubled. Double. So I do believe that September will also be high. Um, so I'm waiting to get those numbers now. Yeah. Um, well, people are finished with their summer travels and now they're kind of slipping into fall, I guess. Right. So yes, yes. Yeah, I think, I think there's a bit of a back to school feel mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. people in, in the fall. Sure. Um, even, even if you're over 50. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's okay. right. Um, yeah, so that's another good point, Carrie, is that a lot of people don't realize that it, it, our minimum age to participate is 50 and above. Um, so I think that's an important thing for people to be aware of. Some of the programs like Meals on Wheels is 60. Um, 
62 even. Um, but as a general rule, if you're interested in a, in a trip or a presentation, you know, 50 and above. Mm -hmm. um, we do have the millage page up. Do you want to talk a little bit about, oh, sorry. Well, all right, we'll, we'll talk about, let's answer, answer Greg's question first. How old do you have to be to participate? Or how, yeah, so you just said 50, right? Yes, that yep, the, that is the okay. answer. Yep. All right, so are we looking at growing? I think we want to make more programs available, right? For our 50 and over, our guests in general. Yes. Yes, you know, I, I will say the pool is maxed out. So we're, we're you know, for the eight hours that we're open, the pool is maxed out because you have to leave time for people to change and shower, et cetera. Okay. Um, but we are always looking for new program ideas right now. We're currently looking for um, some uh, trainers, fitness trainers to come. So if you know people, please let us know or message me or do anything on Facebook or LinkedIn, especially. Um, so we are always looking for new ideas uh, for fitness programming and for presentations. Okay. Um, so we will get back to, the, we do want to talk about the millage that's coming up. We have a page to share, a website to share. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about, let me get that page up there. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about what is this millage for? Yeah. So the senior millage is um, currently stands at 0.23. Um, it was originally designed back in 2004. And at that time, uh, it was a very, very small program, part of Bloomfield Hill Schools, and there was no facility. Um, so then in 2014, we had the facility open, um, but the demand continued to grow. So um, the other thing that has changed is uh, our first 10 years of being uh, open here, we were not paying our way. We were not billed for um, snow removal and maintenance and, um, you know, all of the other things that it takes to maintain this building. So all the support that we got from IT and from public services, we weren't contributing to, they were paying for it out of their budget. So um, logically now uh, that's a time has come that we need to be paying for those things. Mm -hmm. And so we have the central services fees um, that came into play about two years ago. So really we have a structural deficit and that's fine because really no one knew how much demand uh, there was going to be. But now the township board has created a solution for the community to consider. Um, and that would be a small increase. So instead of 0.23, they're um, suggesting or offering, proposing a 0.1 increase. So that would put us at 0.33. And there is this great calculator. So if people mm -hmm. want to know exactly what it means to them in their household, they can put in their address and find out exactly what it means. Um, I have an example. If your home, uh, your taxable value is $200,000, um, not market value. This is taxable mm -hmm. value. Uh, you currently pay... Um, uh, 44, $48 towards the senior services. And then uh, with, if that, if voters approve the millage, it, you would be um, paying $66 per year for all of the services offered by Bloomfield Township Senior Services. And I put a little, that bit.ly down below is the bit.ly that will take you, excuse me, directly to this page where you can put in your street number and find out, um, what the impact will be for you. So that's that's what that bitly is for. Um, what else do what else do we have coming up? What else is going on in the, the township and the senior center? Yeah, great. So um, we just finished our, our big walk and so now we're moving into winter. Um, we have Medicare um, enrollment assistance that we can have uh, counseling here in the center on a specific day. We have a very important flu shot clinic coming up in a couple, I think that's in four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so that registration is open now. And that's for anybody um, 50 and above, keeping in mind that there would be a fee for those 50 and above. And our partner mm -hmm. is U of M Medicine. Um, they're coming to do the the whole medical part of it. We're it just feels, I, feel, I think, excuse me for interrupting, but I think it feels a little late for flu shots, but I think it's because the flu shots, have they been difficult to get the people to schedule? Is that, I think that's what we were talking Oh, I don't, I don't know. You know, there's, there's different thoughts on that. Um, every year for more than 25 years, we've been having our flu shot clinic in October. Um, so the, it is definitely higher demand when there's a shortage, mm -hmm. but we, we absolutely will probably provide about 200 um, uh, vaccinations that day coming up in about four weeks. Um, and then following that, we have our winter uh, program showcase on November 30th. 
And again, that'll be just some refreshments, an opportunity to socialize, see what programs and services are here, meet staff and ask specific questions about programs and services. And then also our, our fun, um, wonderful band, the Ed Black Jazz Combo will be performing. Right. And I do want to mention, so if we also get additional funding that we could increase the hours and open it to um, people that maybe are working during the day, right? That's one of the things in, no. in the future. In the future. Oh, in the future, in yes. The future. Not not with this millage, but right. but again, as pro as as um as uh, participation grows, we rely on participation revenue, and that's that's the revenue that drives the hours. Okay. Definitely. So I know that there's a few people watching right now. Do any of you have any questions, or do you want to say hello to Christine and I? Is there anyone out there that's willing to say hi? Well, we're still growing our audience, so. Um, in the future, I'm sure we'll have more people participate. And this is a new thing that we're kind of trying, this interactive live broadcast. So it makes it a little bit um, you know, exciting for those of us that are on camera. But uh, later, we'll share it, and we can always edit things out if we need to. So do you have any final thoughts for us, Christine, before we wrap up? Oh, goodness. You know, I hear all the time for the people that are here, they say, why aren't more people coming? They don't get what is happening here. Mm -hmm. We're building community. You're investing in your longevity and your wellness. So there's so many things. We talk about vital aging. So come and learn a little bit about us and you might just find something that you love. Well, thank you so much for your time and uh, chatting with me, having coffee with me today. Christine, it's such a pleasure to work with you. And I look forward to a continued fruitful relationship as we can um, you know, reach our seniors and, and those that are going to be coming seniors and uh, extending our programming to our community. So thanks so much. And um, for next time in two weeks, we'll have Martin Brook, our city clerk. So we'll see you then. Thank you, everybody.